touched the piercing in his side. And Jesus grabbed his hand and put it there. Woo! Tell you, I'm not my Jesus boy. Uh, how do you know that you are truly saved? Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Scriptural context. There's no waver. There's no changing. If you've called on the name of the Lord and you've asked him into your heart and you've asked for forgiveness of your sins and you meant it, it happened. Now you've got to make a choice to get into the word of God and follow him with your everything. We can learn through scripture that God does everything he says he will do. And this is no exception. God could have created all of us as mindless drones to just follow him, to automatically do his will, to do his bidding, to do whatever he wanted us to do. But he didn't do that. He gave all of us free will. He gave us the ability to make our own choices. Why did God do that? Because God didn't want to force himself on us. God wanted to be chosen. That was the only way he could do it, was to allow us to make our own decisions which is also a real, real picture of amazing love. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, listen to what this says. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That was his purpose. The whole time he was sent, from the time he was sent as a baby to a virgin named Mary. That was, that was the plan. God had, God had a plan way before he did anything. He wasn't putting things together as he went. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly how it would come about. And he executed it 100% with perfection. We need to be aware that Jesus died a very painful death on that cross. He was flogged before he ever got to the cross. He was beaten while he was carrying the cross. Spit on, mocked, insulted. <laughs> He did nothing wrong. His people were beating on an innocent man. All he ever did was love anybody who got into his presence. And they whooped him for it. He would fall down and they would beat him while he was on the ground. He would have to get back up and try to carry his heavy cross without him to get to the place where they were going to kill him. But did you know that for you, for just one single person in this room, that for just you, to save you, that he would do it all over again. Whew. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. You get the knowledge from getting in the word. Amen. You're not going to get in the word. Don't be upset that you don't have the knowledge. Have you heard the word of Christ this morning? Don't die and not know where you're going when you do. If that's you this morning, this is written to you. As we put up here some contact information for the church, how to get a hold of us, I want to share with you that this morning, if you have never before in your life made the choice to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, is your Lord and Savior. If you want to make that decision right here and right now, if God is talking at the strings of your heart saying, you don't have to die like that. You don't have to be cast in the lake of fire. I want you with me. I, I desire a personal relationship with you. Won't you come and pray to receive him? Now, I'd be happy to help. If you don't know how to do that, you don't know what to say, you want to do that this morning? Won't you come? You do not need me to intercede for you. You can do that right where you are yourself. But if you come up here this morning and you don't know how to start the conversation, start the conversation with me like this. I want Jesus. Pretty simple. And we'll take it from there. Our God is still accepting applications this morning. Won't you fill one out? Won't you come? Stand with us this morning. Mm -hmm.